Okay, so let's discuss a few different knives today and talk about the different types of knives that were used by woodcrafters and how to get them or find them on a budget. The first one we'll talk about is the standard butcher knife. And everybody knows what an old hickory butcher knife looks like. This knife happens to be a hand forged butcher knife that I bought at a yard sale for $3. You can see that it's fairly thin in blade. It has a little bit of curvature here. It has that typical hump on the front of it of a butcher knife here. It has one solid V grind on it, or Scandinavian grind, if that's the term you choose to use, but it is a V grind. Full tang with handles pinned to both sides and walnut. $3 at a yard sale. Yard sales, estate sales, flea markets, Goodwill, thrift stores, Salvation Army, all good candidates for places to find a decent knife that you can use in the woods, or you can just buy a brand new old hickory for less than $20. Things like this do not come around every day. This is the only knife I've ever found like this in the seven to 10 years of looking for a good knife um, on the cheap. This is the only one I've found like it. So let's talk about old hickory for a minute because you can take an old hickory knife like this one. And this was an old hickory butcher knife that has been reprofiled and reground into a Kephart design. And this knife is more of an original type Kephart knife that I traded for. And this one is a Glen Brook version of the Kephart knife. And it's very close, a very close facsimile to the knife that he advertised in his ad in magazines when he started selling the knife with his name on it. He offered this in a four inch and a five inch blade model. So this is that spear point design of the Kephart with a bit of a convex grind on it except it has round handles and doesn't have that slight guard on the front or choil on the front of it right there. But it's a very similar blade design and blade profile, though it's a little bit thinner than the Glen Brook is because it's the same thickness as an old hickory butcher knife, which is what it was. A knife like this can be traded for. I traded for this knife, so I can't tell you exactly what I paid for it, but I traded for it and I traded equipment for it, not another knife. A knife like this old hickory could be bought brand new and then reprofiled and rehandled at any given time if you are into do it yourself. And sometimes when you're doing budget woodcraft, you have to do things yourself to create your gear. Now, if you want a Kephart style design knife and you don't want to pay a lot for it, you can get the Condor Kephart. And Condor makes a Kephart and they make a Nesmic. They're both good facsimiles of the originals. They both have nice thin blades. They are only made out of 1075 steel if that's a problem to you. To me, it's not really a problem. It doesn't throw as good of sparks off the spine as my 1095 does. It's probably not heat treated near as hard, but it's going to be easier to sharpen in the field. It has a nice, pretty much a full flat grind on this knife. It's very, very sharp. It's nice and robust. It feels good in the hand. And these things are like 30 bucks brand new. If you want to go with a French style knife, this is a Jeff White trade knife. And again, it's got that thin material blade made out of high carbon steel with the hammer forged finish here. Very, very sharp. Again, it looks like a steak knife or a dinner knife. And that's what a French trade knife looked like. And this French trade knife and it's just a regular old butcher pattern knife like this were the two absolute most popular knives of any woodsman from the 17. 50s probably all the way through the 1950s so these are very popular very good to understand and experiment with as far as what a woodcrafter would have had on his belt to skin game take care of furs and process meat this is a nesmic that's by jeff white and i'm just showing this more for blade profile than anything else because it's way too thick to be something that would have been carried by a woodcrafter um, it's more of a 3 16 design, so it's a heavy blade, more of a modern tool, but it has that Nesmic profile to it and a convex grind. I'm going to show you this knife real quick, and this is just for example's sake more than anything else. Early on, Marbles came out with a knife, and this is not a Marbles, but it's very similar to their design. Marbles came out with what they called the ultimate or the perfect hunting knife. 
and it was basically a leather and stag handled knife that had pretty much a French style trade knife profile on the blade. This one's got a little bit of a groove up here as well to make it pierce better, I assume. But it was generally believed or generally spoken by most woodsmen at the time that this knife was not near as good as a butcher knife to have on your bow. So the plain old butcher knife still, once the ultimate hunting knife was introduced, the butcher knife was still the standby at that point. This is in my private collection that I traded for. I don't use this knife. I keep it as an example because like the woodsman of the past, I think a butcher knife does everything I need it to do. I don't need a hunting style knife like this. Okay guys, well that was just a real quick look and synopsis at some of the blades that would have been used by woodcrafters from the early 1900s period. And that's what I'm trying to emulate that's what I'm trying to experiment with is understanding what tools they had, what functions they used those tools for, and how well they performed in that time for the given task. And that's where I'm differentiating the woodcraft from the bushcraft. So if you go to Amazon and you go to their book section and you type in woodcraft, you'll see four or five different books there from the early 1900s from people like Daniel Baird, people like Thomas Sutton, people like Nesmik, Horace Kephart. All of those people wrote books called Woodcraft and Something or Something and Woodcraft. You can find them very easy. You can buy modern editions of those books for anywhere from probably six to thirteen dollars and I would encourage you to go to Amazon and pick those books up if you want to research this time period and actual woodcraft in the US. I hope I've given you some fairly budget-minded examples and told you places to look for these type knives. Again, you're looking for a butcher knife, a trade knife, a Nesbic knife, or basically a spear point design knife. Those would have been what was popular. The butcher knife being the most popular and the trade knife or French roach belly trade knife after that. There are places you can buy them for less than $30 on the internet and you can find them at yard sales, flea markets, estate sales, and things like that much cheaper if you are patient and look around. I'll be back with episode three in this series as soon as I can, guys. I appreciate you joining me for this video. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for our instructors, associates, sponsors, and friends. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.